Hello, my friends, how are you doing? Do your photos look amazing on one screen and then terrible on the next screen? Today, I want to show you how to solve this problem. My name is Olivio. I'm a professional designer and I want to thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. The photos you take with your cameras are like the notes of a music piece. The screen is like your own voice. Most people, like most screens, are good at talking in a medium range of tones. But if you try to go too low or you try to go too high, your voice can't keep up with that. It's not able to show these values in a nice way. So the solution to this is photograph in a way that you have more medium values and also adjust your images more in medium values. The main culprit here when you photograph is harsh highlights and harsh shadows. Most professional pictures, they have medium values in there. They go to the location in the morning, in the evening, on an overcast day when you have soft values. Of course, you can also use different techniques to get good results. For example, shoot in bracketing so you can do a HDR picture afterwards or photograph in RAW so you have a wider range where you can adjust the shadows and highlights afterwards in your image. In Affinity Photo, one of the best tools to know if your images will look good on most screens is the scope. So we go to view, studio, scope down here and this window pops up. Now you can also drag this window over here onto the tabs to have it take less space on your screen. But you need to be very sure you actually see the full scope. Right now we can't see the full scope. So click over here in histogram, click back on the scope and now you can see it's a little bit bigger and you can see the zero line down here. In the scope, we have different scope types and they can be a bit confusing. So I'm going to show you the ones that I use the most. The first one that is really good is the RGB parade. The reason for it is because you see your different color channels separately next to each other. How do you read this scope? Very easy. The dark values are on the bottom and the bright values are on the top. The scope is reading your image from left to right for each of the channels. So when you look at this photo here, you can see we have a person here and that person has mainly brown values in the clothing, the hair and the skin. So when we look at our scope over here, you can see in the blue area of the scope, because the person doesn't have too many blue values, there is kind of a gap in here where the person is standing. So this is how easy a scope works. So I will show you two examples of professional photos and two examples of non-professional photos and you will immediately see the difference. So here you can see we have a lot of medium values in here and you look here on our RGB parade, none of the values try to push too high, so they are not too bright, but also most of the values try to stay away from the zero line. They are not hitting the bottom of that scope. Let's go to the second image here. Again, you can see there is actually a nicely visible gap down here where it is not touching the zero line. And very few values go up here in the brighter areas Mainly, these are parts of the clouds, not all of the clouds, just parts of the clouds to bring them out a little bit more. Let's look at some non-professional pictures here. Like this one, for example, you can see we have a lot of very dark values. We have a lot of very bright values. And you can even see here where the sun is in the picture. This is why we have this pyramid shape here. You can see a lot of these values are very high up there in the 90 and above area. And also a lot of the values, you can see how thick this is how bright this area is here where so many values are down in the dark area. Here's another non-professional photo that actually kind of looks good and you would think, hey, this 
probably might work on a lot of screens. But again, when you look at the image, look on how many of these values are up here in the very bright values 90 and above. And a lot of them are also down here in the very dark areas, even hitting the zero line. So that is not too great. In Affinity Photo, we have several tools to solve our problem. For example, under adjustment, we have levels, we have our brightness and contrast, the exposure, shadows and highlights. But one of the best tools is actually the curves and in lab mode. I want to show you why. So let's click on this and here are our curves. Now let's switch over here to histogram and I want to show you something. In the normal curves in RGB mode, let's pull down this handle up here. So on the top right are our bright values, on the lower left are our dark values. Look at the histogram while I pull down the bright values. You can see that this moves over. It limits the maximum brightness as our image can have, but at the same time the histogram gets these spikes. Often that doesn't matter too much, you won't see it, but it is not so great for your image. So let's reset this and switch down here from RGB to lab mode and then from master to lightness. Okay, let's do the same thing and look at our histogram. I pull this side down, the image gets darker. I don't have spikes, but I also don't have values that are complete white. Okay. Let's reset this again and switch over to our scope because this gives us clearer information about our image. So you can see, as we said before, a lot of the values are up here in these brighter values and some of them are here in the darker values. So this might look good at your screen right now, but other screens cannot show them correctly. So they will crush your shadows and make your bright areas too bright. So how can we solve this? Very easy. You can simply pull on this handle to limit the maximum brightness value your image can have. So already we are away with all of our values from the 100 line. This is a dirty way to do that, but it works. You don't want to do this all of the time, but often it is simple, quick, and it works. We can do the same with the shadows. Go down here and push this up a little bit so we don't have completely black values in our image and more screens can handle our dark values. Now we do subtle adjustments in the middle of that curve. Don't do too harsh adjustments. I will show you why. So let's click here to nail down our darker areas and then I will pull down this area here where our brighter values are. And you can see that the sky on the left side gets more dramatic. But if I pull this down more and more, you see in the brighter area, we are getting a lot of bending and we can even see the bending as lines in our scope. This does not look good. So let's reset this a last time. Let's pull this down here a little bit, pull this up here a little bit. Then again, I will hold down these values here by just creating more points. And instead of pulling on this line here in the middle, I will simply push all of that down a little bit more. So all of the values in the brighter area softly come with it. And you can see that we don't get these ugly bands in here, maybe a little bit, but the sky now has darker values in them and the sky will not be completely blown out on some of your screens. Play around with these lightness curve adjustments in subtle ways. Test the images on different screens to see what kind of results you are getting, but try to keep most of the values in the middle area, but try to keep most of your values in the bright areas under 95 and in the dark areas above five. And then they should look good on most screens because they not use any extreme values. I also told you we have a vector scope to judge the saturation in our image. Here in the scope tab, we are going to vector scope. 
This is a circle, as you can see, and there are some matches in there. But you can also see there are smaller circles in there with letters next to it. These letters refer to the color channels that are in that area of the vector scope. R stands for red, MG for magenta, B for blue, CY for cyan, and so on. So for this, you can see how strong the saturation on a technical value is. Not what you see on your screen, but what is actually happening in the image. So the further out these smudges go, the more saturation you have. And the further they stay close to the center, the less saturation you have. Don't go beyond these circles here. This means your image is going to be oversaturated. We can see here, for example, that the red values are going very close to the red circle, even touching it a little bit. So how can we fix this? So adjustments, HSL, and here we have these dots down there. Let's select the red dot and we have a picker over here. Now here's a really cool trick you can do with the picker. Go here and click and hold your left mouse button and then move it over that area. At the same time, look at the color circle in our HSL adjustment. And you can see this is jumping around and it is showing me where on this circle these values are living. So with that, after I have tested these different values, I can adjust this a little bit better and say, I wanna have a little bit more range here for these red values. Now. Let's adjust the saturation and you can see when I do this, look at the vectoscope here. I do this and only the red values are going down. The other values are staying in place. But what you can also see in the image is that the skin and even here the mouth is changing, the lips are changing and so on. So this means we also have these red values in our face. Now, how can we fix this? We go here to our brush and then set the brush to black. Give it a nice big size, opacity 100, hardness. Let's set the hardness down to, let's say, 20%. And now I can paint over these areas over the face here so that this is not affecting these areas and it's just in the other areas of the image. So you can see now if I turn this on and off, only the flowers are changing in saturation, but the face is changing the same because we have created a mask that does not affect the face. That's it for today. Thank you very much for watching and see you in my next tutorial. Bye.